Good morning, friends. Welcome to Livingston United Methodist Church. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us by way of the internet this morning. Today is Sunday, May the 31st of 2020. If you've looked at your calendar, you may have noticed that today is Pentecost. The day that we celebrate the birthday of the church, the day that we remember how the Holy Spirit came upon and fell upon a group of, a large group of, of believers who were gathered together in Jerusalem soon after Jesus had, had gone back to heaven. And, and these believers were gathered together in a room there in Jerusalem when the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost. So this morning, will you join together with me as we call upon the God of Pentecost, as we call upon the Holy Spirit to join us today. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, fall upon us now. Unpack the word, your word for us. Speak to us. Use us. Fill us with the power of with the wisdom of your Holy Spirit. Do in us what we are unable to do by ourselves. And Lord God, we will give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Well, once again, thank you for joining us here on this Pentecost Sunday. Many of the folks from Livingston have um, chosen to worship with us out at the Wesley at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning as we had a drive-in service and an outside service where some people sat in their lawn chairs and others sat in their cars and, and listened while we maintained our social distancing. But I also want to welcome especially all my friends from Brewersville, York, and Coates Chapel United Methodist Church. As, as Brother Darrell is out of town, he has asked me to, um, to, to put this message on y'all's social media page. So we want to welcome you. Now with that in mind, I also want to, uh, and I would be very remiss if I did not tell you thank you once again for supporting this church and for those of you who are members of other churches, thank you for continuing to financially support your churches during this trying time. Now, it really is a crazy time, isn't it? If you're like me, I don't know that, that I've, I've ever seen anything like this. I, I guess I've never lived through a pandemic before. My hunch is you haven't easy either, and, and that by itself is crazy enough. But for me, what makes it even crazier is that there is so much conflicting information out there. One so-called expert says one thing. Another so-called expert says something else. And at least for me, it's hard to know what to believe. And I can get really confused at times. Now, don't worry. I'm not going to give you an additional opinion. In fact, I don't believe that we need more opinions. What I believe we need most is wisdom, not just opinions. Now, James, the half-brother of Jesus, um, nearly 2,000 years ago, he understood this need for wisdom as well. As we continue our series that I'm calling Authentic Christianity based on the book of James. 
Now some of you may have received an email from me today that had a PDF version of our sermon notes and um, you may want to follow along with those sermon notes as we um, as I read to you from James chapter 13 chapter 3 I'm sorry beginning with verse 13 James the half brother of Jesus ask a question who is wise and understanding among you will let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers, who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. My friends, this is the, the word of God. You know, in our day and age, we have more information at our fingertips than, than previous generations have ever had. Back in the day when, when I was in college, when I would be working on a research paper, I would sit at a table and spread out over that table would probably be half a dozen reference books. Now I'm talking big reference books. And they would all be open and I would have my legal pad and I would be taking notes. And um, it's not like that anymore. Now when I do research for a, a Bible study or a sermon or, or something else, I, I sit at my computer, I have my phone in my other hand, and the research that I'm doing is either on my computer or online or I'm using my phone to connect and to ask questions to Google. Times have really changed when it comes to information available. But here's my question. With all of this information that is so readily available at our fingertips, are we any wiser? Are we really any wiser? Mm. You know, wisdom throughout the Bible we are told to seek wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, for instance, it, it says this. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all that you have. Get understanding. Get understanding. Wisdom throughout the Bible. Is, is highly valued. In fact, scholars have an entire section of the Bible in the middle of the Old Testament, beginning with Job and then Psalms and Proverbs and, and Ecclesiastes and Song of Solomon all compose the books of wisdom. The books of wisdom. You see, wisdom is highly valued is intended to be sought after. But here's my question. With all this information that is so readily available to us, are we any wiser? Every year, hundreds of young men and women, and some of them maybe not so young, but they graduate from UWA, and they receive a diploma. 
But let me ask you, are they all wise? Oh, they're more intelligent. They have more knowledge. But are they wise? You see, knowledge comes from books. Wisdom, biblical wisdom, comes from the book. Did you get it? Knowledge comes from books. Wisdom, true wisdom, biblical wisdom, comes from the book. I love how Dr. Tony Evans, one of my favorite Christian authors, um, how he defines wisdom. He says this, wisdom is seeing and interpreting life from God's perspective and then making life decisions based upon that understanding. Now, some of the wisest people I know are some of the most experienced people I know. Okay, they're getting old. Some of the wisest people I know are, are elderly people. But not all elderly people are wise. It's been said this, that you can only be young once, but you can be immature indefinitely. On the other hand, how many of you have ever described a young person in this way? She is much wiser than her years. She is wise beyond her years. You see, true wisdom must be sought after. And it's sought after, and true wisdom is found in the Word of God. When, in John chapter 17, when Jesus was praying for his disciples, he prayed this way. He said, sanctify them by the truth, and your word is truth. Your word is truth. But there is a relationship between knowledge and wisdom. They aren't synonymous. They aren't the same thing, but they are related. You see, if you want to become wise, you've got to... You've got to build it on correct information. Now, knowledge says this. Knowledge says this is true. But that knowledge will only take you so far. Because following knowledge, what you need is understanding. And understand, where knowledge says this is true, Understanding says that this, now that you know what is true, this is what you should do. Mm. But that's not enough. Because you begin with knowledge that saying this is true. And then you go with understanding that on the basis of what I know to be true, this is what I need to do. But if I don't do what I know I need to do, I've never moved into the realm of wisdom. Because wisdom has an application component. You begin with knowledge, correct knowledge. Then you move to understanding. And then you move to application. Listen to what James says again in verse 3. Who is wise and understanding among you? Mm, wise and understanding. And then here is the application component. Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. In other words, it's not enough to have correct knowledge and it's not enough to know what you should do until you do it, do what you should do. You haven't moved into wisdom. Now James, James says 
that there are two kinds of wisdom. In fact, in my Bible, the heading for this passage is literally that. Two kinds of wisdom. On the one hand, there is earthly wisdom. On the other hand, there is heavenly wisdom. And so, let me attempt through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray, to unpack what this is all about. First of all, but there is different origins with between earthly and heavenly wisdom. Earthly and heavenly wisdom have different origins. They come from different places. Earthly wisdom is based upon feelings. In Proverbs chapter 14, I believe, verse 12, I think, it says, there is a way that seems right to a person, but in the end, it leads to death. You see, many people are following the wisdom of their feelings. That is earthly wisdom. <coughs> they're they're, they're doing and base what they base what they do upon what feels right from time to time though I'll have somebody they'll come to me and will say well brother Steve you know if it feels so right how could it be so wrong and then sometimes when they ask me that I've been known to respond well, if it's so right, then how come your life is such a mess? You see, feelings will lead you to a place that you really don't want to go. Feelings will lead you astray. Now, look at the end of verse 15. The very end of verse 15 is a powerful word. It, it, it talks about where this earthly wisdom comes from. It says such wisdom is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Demonic. It comes from the devil. Now think about it. Does the devil want what is best for you? Or does the devil want to trap you. Peter says the, the or John um, says the, let me, wait, let me get this right here. In John 10.10 10, it said, compares the work of the devil to the work of Jesus. And it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That is the devil's agenda. Peter says that, um, that, that, that the devil wants to destroy you. To destroy you. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So, you've got earthly wisdom that is demonic in nature. It's coming from from the one who wants to destroy you. And then you've got heavenly wisdom coming from the one who loves you unconditionally, who suffered and died upon the cross for you. So whose wisdom are you going to follow? Now some people will say, well, I, let me have just a little bit of both. Let me, I want to follow God's wisdom, but yeah, but sometimes I want to just do what feels good. Well, let me warn you, don't try to mix earthly wisdom and godly wisdom. Because a little bit of earthly wisdom, if you follow it, it will lead you where you don't want to go. Let me put it this way. Have you ever gone to the store and bought some rat poison. If you've had a problem with uh, critters in your house, 
and go and get some rat poison or something to, to, kill, to kill rats? Well, do you realize that rat poison is composed almost entirely of food, good food, but just a little bit of poison. All it takes is a little bit of poison to kill the rat. All it takes is a little bit of earthly wisdom that we buy into rather than heavenly wisdom that Jesus died to give us that will bring about spiritual death. No wonder throughout the Bible that God tells us that he wants our whole heart, not a piece of it. So, earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom come from two different origins, two different sources, if you will. But secondly, they follow Two different methods. Two different methods. Earthly wisdom follows the method of bitter envy and selfish ambition. Now envy says that, that you have what, what I want. Ambition says that I want your position. I want to be where you are. I want your position. That is the method of earthly wisdom. But heavenly wisdom follows a different method. Listen to the words that um, it describes heavenly wisdom in verse 17. The wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Do you see the difference? Earthly wisdom is looking out for number one, looking out for me. Heavenly wisdom is looking out for you. For earthly wisdom, those who follow earthly wisdom, it's all about my rights. Those who follow heavenly wisdom, the primary issue is not my rights, but it's a love issue. You see what I mean? I believe in this day and age, in this crazy time, we need wisdom, heavenly wisdom, not earthly wisdom. So we've seen the heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom come from two different origins. They follow two different methods, but finally they will yield two different results. So number three, it's two different results. Earthly wisdom, James says, brings about disorder and every evil practice. Mm. Promoting their own agenda. Sacrificing the truth in order to say what I want to say. To promote my own agenda. Hmm. heavenly wisdom. Wow. Look at verse 18 and see the result of heavenly wisdom. It's found in peacemakers. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Let me say that again. They reap a harvest of righteousness. Those who follow heavenly wisdom, when you're around them, they make you want to become more godly, more righteous, 
more like Jesus Christ, more loving. That the more you're around them, the more the the, the more godly your desires become. Did you catch that? They reap a harvest of righteousness. Not of selfishness, but of righteousness. So, let me ask you. Have you ever given heavenly wisdom a try? I mean, really giving it a try. Following, not just having right information and not just knowing what you need to do, but doing what you know that is based upon the word of truth. Have you ever given heavenly wisdom a try? That's what we need desperately today. Or are you like that guy from the backwoods? Yeah, the backwoods who went into a hardware store and, and he um, was going in there to buy himself a new axe. But the guy behind the counter convinced him to buy a chainsaw instead. He told him that a chainsaw will enable him to, to cut down a whole lot more trees with a lot less effort. So the old backwoodsman, he, he bought into it. He got himself a chainsaw. Three days later, he came back to the same hardware store. He slammed that chainsaw down and said, this is a piece of junk. It, you know, I used it all day, and I only cut down one tree. Now, the guy behind the counter, that kind of confused him, and he, he, he walked around the counter, and he, opened up the cab to make sure there was some gas and oil in there and 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 then he closed it up and he <coughs> and he and he pulled on the cord and the engine roared to life and that old backwoodsman took a step back and said whoa 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 what's going on what is that noise see that old backwoodsman he thought he knew how to use a chainsaw but he didn't have a clue. And he was willing to give it in because he thought it didn't work. I wonder how many of us have convinced ourselves that we've given God's wisdom a try, but we really have never pulled the cord and tried and, and applied God's wisdom to our lives. So what do you do? Well, let me take you back in closing to James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. James says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed about by the wind. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, on this Pentecost side, we need your Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us, not only to guide our minds in, in, in the right information and in the truth and, and to guide our hearts in knowing what we should do, but to guide our hands and our feet and our mouths in doing what we know we need to do. But, oh God, we can't do this on our own. So many of us have tried over and over in our own strength, but on this Pentecost Sunday, we are reminded that it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Oh God, fill us with your Holy Spirit. 
to become men and women, boys and girls, teenagers of wisdom who will reap a harvest of righteousness. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us here at Livingston United Methodist Church. Here's your question. Do you rely more on earthly or on heavenly wisdom? And what changes would God have you make? Go in peace.